Non-coding RNAs come in various types and flavors. They have different structures and also execute a multitude of important functions. Non-coding RNAs, per definition, do not encode for protein. Before this video starts, feel free to like this video and make sure to subscribe for more scientific content. Usually we associate RNA with messenger RNA, a molecule that is produced when the DNA, so to speak the genetic information, is transcribed. The messenger RNA is modified and translated into protein. Therefore, messenger RNA is coding RNA. There are RNA molecules which are not translated into protein products. These RNAs are per definition non-coding. In the early years of the Human Genome Project, it was found that a large part of the genome is not coding for any protein. Let's put it differently, only a tiny subset of the human genome encodes for protein. Therefore, some scientists spoke about so-called junk DNA. However, very surprisingly, the largest part of the whole genome is transcribed. But why, when it is not coding for any protein? Because it has been discovered that non-coding RNAs possess a multitude of essential functions. So, non-coding does not directly imply junk. Here is an overview of the types of non-coding RNA and their functions. I decided to distinguish between housekeeping and regulatory functions. However, make sure that sometimes one does not exclude the other. One non-coding RNA you might have heard of before is the transfer RNA, short tRNA. The tRNA is an essential component for translation. It brings the specific amino acid to the ribosome based on the respective three nucleotide anticodon. There are more than 31 different tRNA molecules in humans. Another very important non-coding RNA that has a housekeeping role is the ribosomal RNA. Together with protein components, different rRNAs form ribosomal units. So the functions of ribosomal RNAs are obvious. rRNAs are required for translation. The next type of non-coding RNAs are called small nuclear RNAs, snRNA. Together with various protein subunits, they assemble to the spliceosome. This RNA protein complex orchestrates splicing. Another sort of non-coding RNA are small nucleolar RNAs, snORNA. These RNAs are also found in a ribonuclear protein complex and their functions are similar to guide RNAs. SNORNAs are involved in chemical modifications of other RNA molecules. Non-coding RNA can also interfere with other RNA. RNA interference is a mechanism that by nature protects the cell from foreign RNA, which infiltrates in case of viral infections. One class of non-coding RNAs to mention here are small interfering RNAs. SIRNAs are 20 to 25 nucleotides long and are involved in gene silencing, such as microRNAs. Both types are processed within the cell by an enzyme called DICER and control transcriptional regulation while they are incorporated in the risk complex. A bit longer than those two types are PIVI interacting RNA molecules, PIRNA. These non-coding RNAs also regulate gene expression. They can silence transposable elements. In more detail, the PIRNAs guide PIVI proteins to the target RNA where these proteins execute cleavage. All of those non-coding RNAs regulate transcription and silence genes. One more class of non-coding RNAs are long non-coding RNAs. The first difference, those RNA molecules are way longer. They have a length of over 200 nucleotides. The functions of those long non-coding RNAs are diverse. Again, they are involved in gene regulation. 
A famous example of those molecules is the exist RNA, a large transcript which executes X inactivation, a process by which one copy of the two X chromosomes in female mammals is inactivated. Dysregulation of long non-coding RNAs has been implicated in human disease such as various types of cancer. The multifunctionality of those molecules is still under investigation. I hope this brief introduction into non-coding RNAs was helpful. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe and feel free to watch this video here. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.